Hi guys and welcome back to the Mighty Blues. My name is of course Cameron and welcome back today to another video. This is another episode of In Other News, the news show where we sit down and we basically cover everything that we haven't already covered this week, hence the title In Other News. We've got some news regarding transfers, regarding the future of Moise Keane. Will he be joining PSG? And more importantly, I suppose, will it be another loan deal, which isn't ideal for any of us whatsoever? Everton have been linked with Brighton defender Ben White in a move that could potentially cost £50 million, which is absolutely baffling. Everton have been linked with Barcelona midfielder Philippe Coutinho once again and various other news to discuss in today's episode. So strap yourselves in, get yourself a cup of tea, get yourself a cup of coffee, whatever you want to drink. Leave a like on the video if you're enjoying it, subscribe to the channel if you're new and let's get straight into it. Before we get into any of the news regarding transfers and the rumours etc, Everton Everton have confirmed today that under 23's player of the season, Ryan Astley, has signed a new two year deal with Everton. So we want to send a big congratulations, of course, to Ryan. Fantastic news. Absolutely fantastic news that um, that Ryan has, has been able to pen a new two-year deal with the football club. Very, very, very good player. Player with a lot of potential. A player that I could definitely see uh, breaking into the first team in the coming years. Uh, fantastic season. Last season for Everton under-23s, of course. Winning the player of the season. And massive news that he has signed a new two-year deal. So congratulations to Ryan. And obviously, we're wishing the best to him in the future and look forward to hopefully seeing him at Goodison Park one day in the next coming years. Obviously, we've done the live stream earlier on today regarding Bramley Moor Docks. Everton have confirmed the date that building work will commence on Bramley Moor Docks. So if you haven't checked out that live stream, please, please do so. We're not going to talk too much about Bramley Moor in this video because we did cover it all in the live stream as well. First transfer rumour of the day again. It's been a manic, manic week for Everton Football Club, hasn't it? We've spoken about Rafael Benitez on a number of occasions. He is the new Everton manager. We talked about what if he is a success at Everton Football Club. We talked about his first press conference and the words of Farhad Mashiri, the words of Marcel Brands, the words of Bill Kenwright on the appointments. We also talked about his announcements uh, and what it meant for Everton Football Club. We've spoken about Bramley Moore today uh, and we haven't really had an, an awful lot of time to talk about transfer rumours and players that are being linked with moves to Everton Football Club but one of them <coughs> has come out earlier on today and it is regarding Barcelona forward or Barcelona attacking midfielder whatever you want to say Philippe Coutinho Philippe Coutinho a name of course that was I don't want to say heavily rumoured with Everton, you know last summer or, or in January because that would indicate that maybe Everton were, were you know um you know, happy to, to bring Philippe Coutinho to the football club, but he certainly was rumoured quite an awful lot with a potential move to Everton. Obviously, it never ended up transpiring into anything, and I think he's a player that, although is very, very good and brings a lot of quality and is technically a very, very good footballer, I just don't think he's what we need at Everton Football Club at the moment, and I feel like a lot of Evertonians share those opinions. But today's rumours are coming from Fijazes, who have said that Everton have inquired to Barcelona about, the, about potentially signing... Philippe Coutinho on loan, Everton would want to insert a buy clause to the contract. Now, I, I don't believe this, if I'm being perfectly honest with you, I don't believe it. Um, again, obviously, I'm not going to sit here as I don't do Everton and, and try and determine you know, the source and whether or not they're a reliable source or whether or not they're not a reliable source. But one thing I do know is that... Um, <coughs> I really, really can't see Everton, Everton looking at bringing in Philippe Coutinho. It seems like quite a lazy rumour. Obviously, the you know the uh, considering the announcement of Rafael Benitez as the new manager and his connections with a certain other club in this city, and obviously Philippe Coutinho's connections with said certain other club as well. It seems like a very easy rumor for a journalist to put together and try and put out there and spark some um, you know attention and spark some controversy. But I really can't see Everton being interested in bringing Philippe Coutinho to the football club. He's a very good player, technically a very good, very sound footballer, uh, but he's had his injuries over the past recent years. He's obviously struggling at Barcelona and wanting a way out and I think it very much seems like his agent trying to throw his name out there to maybe get him a, a move back to the Premier League and back to where you know he made his name as, as a top level footballer and he is a top level footballer Philippe Coutinho but he's at that age now um, that I just don't think Everton need to be looking at I think Everton need to be looking at younger younger, uh, more hungry players and also players that aren't in the position of Philippe Coutinho he's more of a 
an attacking midfield there. Yes, he can play off of the wings, but he wasn't blessed with the most natural of, of pace. And I just don't think it's, a, it's an area that Everton need to be uh, addressing sort of ASAP as a, as a matter of priority. You know, you've got right back there that needs to be addressed for me, you know, in the next week or so. Um, whether that's Denzel Dumfries or another name, I don't know, but it certainly needs to be addressed ASAP. You've got right wing, you've got left wing, you've got centre forward. Um, and then you're probably looking at centre midfielder and centre back as well. So I don't see this one being true, but that is the latest regarding Philippe Coutinho. The next transfer rumour comes from Ekrem Kanu, who has said that Chelsea manager Thomas Tuchel wants to sign Everton striker Dominic Calvert Lewin if Chelsea fail to sign Erlen Haaland this summer. There has been no formal talks yet with Everton, but talks are expected to begin soon. That's very nice for. Um, Thomas Tuchel, isn't it? Very nice for him to want to sign Dominic Calvert-Lewin. I wouldn't mind buying a Ferrari and a Lamborghini tomorrow, actually, when I come to think of it. And I might buy a Bentley as well while I'm there. And I might get a swimming pool converted on my house. Oh, no, I won't, because I might want those things, but we can't always get what we want. And that's the message I'd say to Thomas Tuchel and Chelsea. You can't always get what you want. Again, look, Dominic Calvert-Lewin is a, a striker who has had a, a fantastic season last season at Everton Football Club. 23-plus goals, I think he scored last season. I can't remember the exact numbers off the top of my head. Obviously, he's gone away with England. He hasn't had the greatest time in the Euros yet. He's only played a couple of minutes. Um, of course, wasn't involved in the squad at all for the game against Germany, which was which was very, very disappointing. But he's obviously a striker that you know has, has got a lot of potential and a lot of quality and a lot of talent. Um, he's still at a very, very good age. He's got an aerial jump on him like no other. He's a good goal scorer he's getting in the right areas and like I said for me and I've said this before and I'll say it again for me the the best thing about Dominic Calvert-Lewin is his willingness to improve his, his attitude to become better his attitude to make himself better and make himself into a you know a better footballer and, and, and ultimately look that's a, a, an attribute that will uh, will turn the attentions of a lot of football clubs and it wouldn't surprise me whatsoever if Chelsea would be interested in bringing in Dominic Calvert-Lewin if they fail to sign their number one target which appears to be Erlen Haaland in the same way as that it wouldn't surprise me if Manchester United uh, turn their attention to Dominic Calvert-Lewin if they fail to sign their number one target whoever that may be so look if you're asking me am I surprised that Dominic Calvert-Lewin has got admirers around the Premier League and around Europe, absolutely not, he's a top, top level striker and he's a striker that has, has had a great season and shown great potential, um, so it doesn't surprise me that clubs are looking at him, certainly the likes of Manchester United do, I think are really after that target man, um, you know, obviously the talks of Harry Kane going to Manchester City and United potentially wanting him, Chelsea also in that conversation as well, Dominic Calvert-Lewin is Obviously, not at that level that Harry Kane is at, but certainly a, a similar striker in regards to a big number nine, a big target man. And if you play to Dominic Calvert-Lewin strengths, then I think he can he can score a lot of goals in, in any team in the Premier League. Um, as he's shown in, in in a team at Everton with very little creativity for 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 you know most of the season, he managed to score twenty plus goals, um you know and, and be one of the highest goal scorers in the Premier League as well, and that's without taking penalties or without taking set pieces. So it doesn't surprise me that that Chelsea could be interested in in taking Dominic Calvert Lewin or signing Dominic Calvert Lewin. Um, like I said. They can want all they want. I'd like a, a you know a, a Bentley to drive, but I haven't even got my driver's license, so I'm not getting it. Um. So, again, kind of see this one com coming into fruition. Look, if I'm being honest, I don't think Dominic Calvert-Lewin will leave Everton this season. I don't. I think Dominic Calvert-Lewin will want to stay. I think he'll want to, you know, he'll want to give it another year, maybe, at the very least, um, and see where the club are going. Obviously, under a new manager, and I get that, you know, the, the change between Carlo Ancelotti and Rafa Benitez, um, you know, will be one that, Every Everton player has to become accustomed to, of course they will be, but I don't think Dominic Calvert-Lewin would have much of an issue with that. Obviously, Duncan Ferguson is set to remain at the football club, and Duncan Ferguson is a massive figure in Dominic Calvert-Lewin's career as well, and, and a massive figure in Dominic Calvert-Lewin's improvements as a footballer. Um, so, I, I can't see Dominic Calvert-Lewin wanting to leave Everton this summer. I really, really can't. Hopefully not, anyway, because I really, really like Dom. Some fans would say, look, if Chelsea can give us 70, 80, 90 million, whatever, then sell him, and that's fine. That's your opinion, and everyone's entitled to that opinion. But for me, personally, I'd like Dominic Calvert-Lewin to, to stay at Everton. I really like him. I think he's a, a unbelievably hard-working footballer of which you don't see many of these days. I think he's got ambitions and dedication to, to become even better than what he is currently, and he's very good currently. Uh, and I think that's the type of player Everton need to be able to keep a hold of. And also, he's a very good striker as well. He's a great head of the ball. He's a, he's a good finisher of the ball. Can he improve? Absolutely. Um, 
but hopefully he makes those improvements at Everton. But that is the latest, according to, um, bear with me two seconds, Ek- Ekrem Konor, Chelsea manager Thomas Tuchel. <coughs> Wants to sign Everton striker Dominic Calvert Lewin if they fail to sign Erlen Haaland this summer. So very, 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 very interesting. Um, hopefully there's there's nothing in it other than Chelsea interested in Dominic Calvert Lewin and Everton say no, you're not going anywhere near him, and Dom saying no, I don't want to go there either. But look, it's silly season, isn't it? We're right in the bang in the middle of silly season, and um, I'm sure we'll have a lot more rumours to talk about over the next coming days and weeks. The next one is regarding Moise Keane. The Moise Keane saga continues once again. This is a saga that's been going on longer than Everton's managerial search, which seems pretty much impossible considering that lasted four weeks. The latest on the Moise Keane situation is coming from Fabrizio Romano. Mr. Here We Go himself has said that Paris Saint-Germain wants Moise Keane back, and it is only a low negotiation with a buy option included as reported one month ago no permanent deal uh keen wants to join psg and leonardo who is the uh, sporting director i believe of psg <coughs> is waiting for everton's answer it is up to rafael benitez so of course new everton manager Rafael Benitez will ultimately have the final say on whether or not Moise Keane joins Everton. I'm uh, joins PSG, sorry, from Everton. I'm really disappointed with this. I can't lie. I'm really, really disappointed. Am I massively disappointed to see Moise Keane leave Everton Football Club? If he does, no. Uh, because, again, obviously it, it, it hasn't worked. So far for Moise Keane at Everton, um, he come in, you know, with a big price tag and with big expectations and he just couldn't settle into the Premier League, he couldn't settle into Everton, obviously he had a little bit of a shaky season, he wasn't great, he wasn't getting many opportunities and then obviously last summer he went out on loan to PSG and he had a fairly successful season at PSG, um, you know, scoring goals in, in League 1, in the Champions League and, and, you know, ultimately making an impression on PSG and there was a point where I remember sitting down thinking we'll get 50, 60 million from PSG for Moise Keane here because they've got money to burn and he's he's doing really well and performing really well over in France so why would they not pay the price tag and the longer this saga has gone on the more evident it's become that PSG won't be paying anywhere near that amount of money in fact PSG don't want to pay any money whatsoever they want to take him on loan again there was rumours uh, a couple of days ago that if they were to put a, 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 an option to buy in there it would be less than 35 million euro which is probably around what 27 28 million pounds something like that um and again, maybe foolish of me last season when I sat here and said we'll probably get 40 50 for them. Maybe I didn't take into consideration, obviously, the financial implications of, of the pandemic and even a club the size of PSG with the monetary uh, value of, of PSG probably don't want to go out and be spending 40 50 million pounds on a striker that's still very young and still very raw and there's still a massive risk um, with, even though he's had a, a very good season there or a good season there last season. Um, but I just don't see how this deal benefits Everton whatsoever. Everton are, are in a situation with financial fair play where we really could do with selling Moise Keane. We really could do with making some money back on him in order to be able to spend that money in other areas. We've, we've identified as a fan base and I'm sure the club have identified and hopefully Rafa Benitez will identify that there's various positions on the pitch at Everton that need improving from right back to right midfield to right wing to sorry to right right back to right wing to left wing to centre uh, midfield to centre to back potentially to striker there's four five six positions that Everton don't just need to improve because the players there are good but they're not good enough well that is I suppose it is that but we you know what I'm saying we don't just need to improve it because we want to do a bit of improving we need to drastically improve those areas on the pitch otherwise we're not going to you know we're not going to be able to challenge for Europe we're not going to be able to finish in the European positions or win the trophies because the current squad isn't good enough we haven't got a winger in the squad it's as simple as that we have not got a winger in the squad whatsoever and although my scheme coming back to Everton if Rafa Benitez turned around and says no <coughs> We want Moise Keane to, to stay here, although he would obviously provide that, that back up to Dominic Calvert-Lewin, which would take off striker off the, the list as potential signings. We would also have a player that clearly doesn't want to be here, clearly unhappy here, wants to be somewhere else at the football club. And also, forgetting all of that, Moise Keane wasn't very good at Everton, you know, in his first season. Yes, you know, when he got his opportunity, he scored and he had a couple of games where he was very good, but 
more often than not, he looked like he struggled to keep up with the pace of the league, to keep up with the physicality of the league as well. And there's a reason as to why he didn't get an awful lot of starts at Everton. So not only will we have an unhappy player here, we'd also have a player that, yes, provides competition to Dominic Calvert-Lewin and could step in when Dom, you know, needed a little bit of a rest or was a little bit tired, but is not at the level that Dominic Calvert-Lewin. I've had this discussion with Evertonians before, and some Evertonians think that Moise Keane is, is better than Dominic Calvert-Lewin. I just, I just, I don't see it. I really, really don't see it. Maybe in, in, in general terms but certainly not in, in terms of being a, an Everton striker at the moment Dominic Calvert-Lewin is, is much better and much more suited than Moise Keane is so I really don't see how this deal works for Everton I don't see how Moise Keane going back out on loan for another year with a buy clause of or, or, or a potential buy clause of 30 five million pounds or something along the lo- those lines works for Everton uh, obviously Fabrizio Romano hasn't mentioned how much the buy clause will be he has just simply said that PSG wants Moise Keane back and it is only a loan negotiation with a buy option included, no permanent deal. And like I said, what is the point? Somebody please, please inform me of the point of Everton sending Moise Keane out for another year when you could do one or two things, keep him and have him as back up to Dominic Calvert-Lewin and utilise him ourselves or sell him to somebody else that may give us 25 30 million euros for him now and therefore we can reinvest that money into the squad there's no point in sending him out on loan again and just you know again getting rid of him for not absolutely nothing and somebody else you know you you know psg having him for a year for again no no fee whatsoever um psg might say you know if it was if it was an obligation to buy it'd be a little bit different because psg might have said okay we'll take him on loan for the season We'll give you 10 million and then there'll be an obligation for us to buy him for 30 million after it. So ultimately we get 40 million back for him and therefore you can say, okay, that's fair enough. But at the moment it's a loan with an option to buy, which I just don't think makes any sense for Everton whatsoever. Certainly not in the financial situation that Everton are in. We really and ideally need to sell Moise Keane in order for us to open the gates a little bit more with FFP and allow us to have a little bit more leeway and a little bit more uh, free spending power than what we've currently got now because if we loan Moise Keane out again then he's the one player that we could have you know gotten rid of and made some money on that wouldn't have had a massive impact on the current squad then you're probably looking at maybe having to sell one of the big boys and you know again dare I say a Calvert-Lewin or a Richarlison or a Luca Deed in order to make a lot of money to be able to reinvest that into the squad when you could have just done that with a player who, who you know a lot would say hasn't got a future of the football club anyway so I really don't understand. I really don't understand the um, why Everton a uh, 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 sort of you know entertaining another loan deal. Everton should have said, listen, you buy him or you don't buy him. If you buy him, then you, you can have him, and we want this amount of money. If you don't buy him, he's coming back to us. End of story. Not another loan deal. Not an option to buy. Not a we might buy him if we like him at the end of it. No, absolute nonsense, mate. You either buy him or you don't buy him. If you don't buy him, you're not getting him back on loan. He's staying here. And we'll sell him, we'll either sell him to someone else or he'll be a part of our club uh, for next season. And hopefully Rafa Benitez sees that and hopefully Rafa Benitez goes in and goes, not a chance is that happening. Um, but who knows, maybe Everton have got some other way of getting around financial fair play and we can afford to allow Moise Keane to go out on loan for another season and maybe we're going to spend money this season in, 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 and we'll find some way of doing that without needing Moise Keane to be sold, who knows. Um, but at the moment... I'm not happy with that deal whatsoever. I'm not happy with that deal. But the latest is from Fabrizio Romano, and that is that PSG want Moise Keane back, and it's only a loan negotiation with a buy option included. No permanent deal. Keane wants PSG. Leonardo is waiting for Everton to answer, and it is up to Rafa Benitez. So we'll uh, we'll wait and see how that one transpires over the coming days and weeks, I suppose. Let us know your thoughts on the Moise Keane rumours in the comments section down below. We'd be really, really interested to hear everybody's thoughts on the Moise Keane situation. Are you sort of do you just want to you know have Moise Keane go out the club and would you, you know wouldn't you mind send them out on loan do you agree with me do you think if it's not a permanent deal and it's a bit silly uh do you want to keep Moise Keane do you think Moise Keane could be a, a valuable player for the future let us know of course in the comment section down below moving on away from transfer rumors for the moment we will get back onto them in a moment I promise you but away from them for the moment some very very positive news some very exciting news and some news we can all be happy about and get behind I know the last week as Evertonians has been very much of a roller coaster and it's been a period of you know being happy with the managerial appointments or not being happy and if we're not happy having to accept it and looking at the positives i get all of that but one bit of information we can certainly be very very happy about is coming out from the guardian last night and they have said that the premier league is expected to be told it can fill stadiums to full capacity when the season starts in august unbelievable unbelievable news hopefully this is true 
and hopefully there is no more you know pushbacks in the in the easing of covid restrictions and hopefully there's no more delays in the easing of covid restrictions and hopefully that article from the guardian is absolutely true that the premier league can be told that they can hold stadiums at full capacity from the start of the Premier League season in August. I can't even begin to explain to you, and I'm sure a lot of people are feeling the same, but I can't even begin to explain how happy that information makes me feel, to be honest with you, because I can't even begin to explain how excited I am to return to Goodison Park, and not just return to Goodison Park, but for all of us to return to Goodison Park, 40,000 of us screaming and shouting and backing these players, because let's be honest, if last season told us absolutely anything, if last season told us one thing and one thing only, it was that these players can't play at Goodison Park without a crowd, they simply cannot play at Goodison Park without a crowd, they need us behind them, they need us to back them, they need us to, you know, to... um you know, to be screaming and shouting and sucking the ball into the Gladys as the old-fashioned saying, and, and getting behind them and being the 12th man. These players absolutely need that because they struggled massively at home last season. Um, obviously, they'll be managed by Rafa Benitez now, which for me is an exciting time in the club's future. A lot of fans, you know, some fans might might agree with that, but I am excited. I'm excited to see what the future holds, and I'm excited to see what Rafael Benitez can bring with this squad, and hopefully, you know, a, a couple of new players as well. Um, but... How good, how good of news is that, that the Premier League are expecting to be told that they can hold stadiums at a full capacity from the start of the Premier League season in August. Unbelievable. I can't wait to get back to Goodison Park. Get me back there. Get me back there right now. None of this. Oh, 2,000, 4,000. Yeah, it was great when it was there. And obviously, again, I understand what's gone on in the last 12, 18 months in the world. I get it. And I get that we couldn't have had stadiums at full capacity because of what's gone on. And I get there's more important things in life than football. But listen... If people can go and stand in raves and go to festivals and this, that and the other, then we can go to Goodison Park and we can cheer on the toffees. So hopefully that's true and hopefully there's no, like I said, there's no delays that could potentially push that date further backwards. But fantastic, fantastic news there and really, really positive news about us potentially returning to Goodison Park as a full capacity. Uh, on to transfer rumours again then. We'll we'll move straight back to transfer rumours because there has been quite a big rumour over the last 24 hours or so. One that... I don't particularly believe, personally, but certainly quite a big rumour in regards to um, to to Everton, and that is regarding Brighton and Hove Albion defender Ben White, and this is actually coming from Matt Hughes of the Daily Mail, uh, who has said that Everton have held talks with Brighton over defender Ben White regarding a £50 million move. No formal offer has been made yet, but Everton have indicated they are prepared to pay £50 million, with £20 million being paid up front and £30 million spread over four years. Um... I don't understand this rumour whatsoever, to be honest with you. Firstly, I, I don't particularly believe it. Um, I don't understand why Everton would be looking at bringing in another centre-half, regardless of the price and regardless of the quality of the player. I think if Everton had already signed a right-back, let's say Denzel Dumfries was already an Everton player. Let's say we'd already signed a winger, I don't know, a Leon Bailey. Let's say we'd already signed um, you know, a central midfielder. Again, I don't know, maybe Nunes or, or uh, Anguisa from Fulham or Basuma. Let's say we'd already signed a backup striker and then we were being linked with Ben White for 50 million. Firstly, I'd say, where have we got this money from and how have we managed to evade FFP with this? And secondly, I'd understand it because we'd already identified and improved the other key areas on the pitch that need improving. But for this rumour to come out now, when Everton still haven't signed the right back to this day, and there's still, you know, obviously Denzel Dumfries has been rumoured um, quite a few times, but there's still not any real clear evidence and information that we're close to signing a right back. Still haven't signed a winger, either for the left or right hand side of the pitch, which means we still have no wingers at the football club. Still haven't signed a centre midfielder. Um, still haven't signed a backup striker. So I don't know why we'd be looking at signing a fifty million pound centre half. Do we need to improve? At, 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 do we need our centre backs to improve? Do we need to bring in a better centre back? Potentially, maybe, <clears throat> but certainly not before we need to bring in a right back. Certainly not before we need to bring in a right winger. Certainly not before we need to bring in a left winger. So I don't understand why Everton's focus at the moment would be on a centre back. Never mind a centre back that's going to cost fifty million pounds. If Everton went out and spent fifty million pounds on Ben White, there'd be very, very little room to bring in. You would probably be able to bring in maybe one more player. 
So you wouldn't you would you would either get a right back and no wingers and no centre midfielder, or you get a winger and no right back, or you'd get a centre midfielder and no winger or right back. We wouldn't be able to go and bring in an, a winger or two wingers, a right back, a centre mid, a striker, and spend fifty million pounds on a on a uh, central defender. So I can't say. I massively believe this rumour, if I'm being perfectly honest with you, I can't say I massively believe it, obviously Ben White has been heavily, heavily linked uh, with a move to Arsenal over the last week or so, and there was rumours floating about that Arsenal would pay that money up front for him, but there's clearly some, you know, divide or some, some thing in, in the Arsenal move that is stopping that move from, from going ahead, and I really see this this you know rumor and this stuff about Everton being interested in bringing him in for fifty million as either Brighton or Ben White's agent saying right what we'll do is we'll throw another club in there who is a competitor to Arsenal very similar to Arsenal and we'll we'll put out there that they're willing to pay in in instalments and Brighton are happy with that and then hopefully Arsenal will pull the finger out and make the deal happen. Um, because for me, it just doesn't make sense. Ben White's a very, very good defender, by the way. I'm not, not putting him off. He's a very, very good defender. Is he worth £50 million? Pounds? I don't know, but he's a very good player. He, he, he obviously, he's a, he's a very good player. He had a great season last season at Brighton. Uh, he was at Leeds previous to that and, and a very good defender there. So it's not necessarily because I don't think Ben White's worth that money or because I don't want Ben White because he's not good enough. Ben White's a very good defender. Ben White next to Ben Godfrey would be brilliant, I think. Um, obviously, that would mean you'd probably see Yeddy Meenan or Michael Keane or Mason Holgate leaving the football club, if not, you know, maybe a couple of those names. Um, but I just don't see it happening. I just don't see it happening whatsoever. I can't see in, in, in which world Everton would spend £50 million on another centre-back when we've currently got Yeri Mina, Michael Keane, Ben Godfrey, Mason Holgate, Jared Branthwaite coming through, Reese Welsh coming through as well. And, and I know you might say, yeah, but Cam, you know, None of them are as good as Ben White, so we still need to improve at centre back. That's fine. We do. And like I said, if we go out and buy a, if we go out and buy a right back, a right winger, a left winger, a centre mid and a centre forward, and then we're looking at centre back, absolutely sound. But we haven't done that. And those areas are more of a priority than centre back at the moment. So there you go. That is the latest regarding Ben White. Bit mad from Matt Hughes of the Daily Mail saying that Everton have held talks with Brighton over Ben White. Um regarding a fifty million pound move. He's a very good footballer, he is a very good player. But I just can't see this one happening whatsoever. And I can't see Everton have, have being held talks with him. Uh, or certainly not held talks over the move that will cost that much money anyway. Um maybe they have. Again, I'm not saying that, that Matt Hughes is, is lying or the Daily Mail are lying, but I just can't see how this one would, would happen. I can't see how it would work, to be honest with you. And I can't see why Everton's focus would be on bringing in another centre-half over bringing in other areas of the pitch that need improving. But anyway, that is the latest on Ben White. If you were to ask me what my initial thoughts on that is, is that whether it be Ben White's agent, whether it be Brighton, whether it be someone else, I think they're trying to, you know, sort of push Arsenal to pull the finger out a little bit and use Everton's name as maybe a little bit of a decoy because I really can't see that one happening. But there you go. Maybe it will happen. Maybe it won't. Maybe I'll be wrong. Who knows? Uh, anyway, the latest is regarding Hammers Rodriguez. This is calling from Antenna to the Portes who have said that talks for Hammers Rodriguez to join AC Milan are well underway. He would sign a three-year deal worth €6 million Euros a year. He has one year left on his Everton contract uh, and Milan would pay around €10 million Euro to sign him. Um, yeah. Bit mad, bit mad in it really, you know, James Rodriguez, again, a player that um, I'm sure we um, we all sort of had worries would leave the football club, certainly after Carlo Ancelotti's exit, I think we all feared that that could be the end for James Rodriguez, um, there's been articles in Spanish media and in Colombian media over the last couple of days just to state that James hasn't got the greatest relationship with Rafa Benitez from his time at Real Madrid, and that could be a big reason as to why he leaves the football club. I don't really buy into much of that whatsoever, to be honest with you. I think that's probably the best excuse for Hammers to use if he wants to leave Everton. Um, but I think Hammers has had his eyes set on leaving the football club well before Rafa Benitez is being appointed. If he does leave, and again, this could just be pure paper talk at the moment, Hammers could turn up on Monday to pre-season and go, no, I'm, I'm dead happy here, I want to stay here, I love it here. Um, but at the moment, the latest coming from various different sources is that apparently AC Milan are heavily in talks with with Hammers for the for the move. Um, it seems like it's Hammers' agent Jorge Mendes who is who is um, leading this sort of negotiation and leading the the the, the one for Hammers Rodriguez to move away from Everton and, and, and join AC Milan. AC Milan have been heavily heavily rumoured uh, with Hammers and heavily linked with them over the last week or so. Um, so we'll have to see where this one goes. Um, not massively surprised. 
I, lo I like James. I think he had a great season and I think he's a very good player and it would be great to keep a hold of him. But I can't lie, I'm not massively bothered either. <laughs> to be honest with you, if he leaves, he leaves. Uh, we will get some money back for him. We'll get his wages off the bill and hopefully we'll be able to reinvest that in into a younger, more hungry, more dedicated player. If he stays, then we've got a top quality player um, who will be here next season. So... Who knows? We'll have to wait and see how that one goes, of course. Uh, Phil Neville has been talking to Jamie Carragher, I believe, on Jamie Carragher's podcast, and he was talking about his biggest disappointment at Everton and he said my biggest disappointment was the semi-final at Wembley when Liverpool beat us 2-1 we took the lead but ultimately we were a good team with good players in a brilliant moment we were playing so well we had Jelovic up top he then says um you know when you go in at half time and you're 1-0 up in a semi-final I didn't feel the way I didn't feel the believe uh, the belief that they believed they could go on and win the second half the dressing room's dead you normally come in at half time it's bouncing and it's energy I felt fear which is just, um, <clears throat> it is not great, is it? It's, it's really not great to hear when your former captain is coming out and saying, yeah, we were 1-0 up in a semi-final against our biggest rivals and we were shit scared. Um, it just showed the mentality of that, that, that side at that time. It showed the mentality of even Phil Neville to come out and say that. Um, you know, he, he was the captain. He could have, um, he could have come out and, and, and said, no, uh, you know, we're going to win this positive. We're 1-0 up, we're playing well. And, Look, it looks like he didn't, um, but yeah, not great, is it? Not great for him to say. It's Everton news, so I thought we'd cover it, but it's obviously news from a long, long time ago, but again, bit bit shit for him to say, isn't it? Um, Jordan Pickford has been talking about Rafa Benitez. He had his England press conference yesterday, and he said, the new manager, his career, the trophies he has won, the desire to be successful. He rang me last night, said, enjoy the tournament, do well, and I'll see you when you get back. This is something I talked about briefly on the uh, on the stream we just done before regarding um, regarding Bramley Mordock. We talked briefly about uh, Rafa Benitez and, and, and the things that he's already done since being at Everton Football Club. We talked about the fact that he's already completed an audit of the squad and he did that even before he was given the job to sort of impress, I don't know, the board or to show how dedicated he is to the job. Um, <clears throat> the the fact that, you know, one of the first things he did when he arrived at Finch Farm on Wednesday morning was say, look, where's the transfer list? I want to find out who we're, who we're looking at. He mentioned that. He said, I've been looking at the transfer list this morning, <clears throat> which if you read between the lines, to me, says that as soon as he got into Finch Farm, he wanted to get going. He wanted work to start. And now, obviously, you're hearing players like Jordan Pickford come out and say, yeah, you know, he's already given me a call and said, listen, enjoy the tournament, enjoy the the experience and do well and we'll see you when you get back which is it's great isn't it because like i said said it uh, earlier on i want a manager that's proactive i want a manager that comes into everton and is proactive with what he's doing wants to move the club forward wants to improve the club not just wants to train the players on the pitch and say right you you play there and you move there and you do this i want a manager that really wants to buy into Everton and wants to improve everything and everton and it's them little things you know rafa benitez could have just waited until I don't know, a couple of weeks' time when Jordan Pickford returns to Finch Farm and shakes his hand and says, nice to meet you, but he hasn't. He's known that Jordan and, uh, and the rest of the England squad, including Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who we may have spoke to as well, we don't know, uh, and have got a massive game coming up on, on Saturday, tomorrow night, in fact, um, and he's obviously thought, you know what, I'll give them a call and I'll say, listen, I'm the new manager, best of luck, do your, do your best, get your head down, work hard, and we'll see you when you get back, and, and it's just them little things for me that really stand out, and are making the Rafa Benitez appointment more exciting for me, I've got past the point of acceptance, and the past the point of, I'm not even at, it is what it is now, I'm actually really excited, and I'm starting to get, I'm happy that Rafa Benitez has been appointed, because you're reading things like this, and things that, you know, he's he's always the first in the training ground, the last out, he's been known to stay over the training ground, he's heavily dedicated to his job, he's data driven as well, and all of these different things for me are just adding up for me to go do you know what I'm actually quite happy about this appointment regardless of what he said 20 10 years ago and where he managed 10 years ago I'm actually really happy because it seems like Rafa Benitez is, is a top professional and knows what he's doing whether or not that is the case I'm sure we'll soon see um but yeah Jordan Pickford has spoke about Rafael Benitez and the fact that he has given him a call and basically told him to do his best in the tournament and he'll see him when he gets back uh, and the final bit of news and information is regarding Everton's trip over to Florida uh, later on this month in the Florida Cup uh, Everton in the USA uh, on Twitter have uh, put a tweet out that says reduced rate on Florida Cup tickets uh, purchase tickets to see the Toffees in action at the Florida Cup on Ticketmaster between the 1st and the 7th of July and save 6.5% on sales tax uh, so if you haven't already got your tickets if you're living in the area and you can get to the games then if you go on 
Everton in USA's Twitter account or Everton in the USA, they've got uh, one of their latest tweets has got a link to the Ticketmaster um, website and you can go on there and you can get your tickets. So if you can get there, definitely get there. Unfortunately, I won't be there travel restrictions and all that sort of stuff um and it's not cheap to get to florida is it let's be honest but if you can get there and you, you know you can make your way then uh, take up that opportunity and, uh, and go and watch everton but anyway there you go look that is going to do it for this uh, video that's going to do it for this episode of in other news i hope you're liking these episodes by the way if you are leave us a little comment down below just leave us a comment saying yeah i enjoy these types of videos where you're bringing the other news that you're not talking about because what i do on the streams is i like to have a topic and i like to talk about that topic and sometimes that topic might be Rafael Benitez like today sometimes that topic might be Bramley Moore and when we're talking about Bramley Moore and you know the fact that we've got a new stadium on the horizon and, and, it, and it's brilliant I don't want to then be sitting there and also talking about Ben White or also talking about James Rodriguez because that's not the topic of the stream so I decided to do this series to sort of talk about the other news and, and everything else that's going on behind the scenes that we don't manage to talk about on the live streams Um, what I will say before we go by the way is that I am going away on Monday morning uh, or Sunday afternoon Monday morning um, actually to london so there won't be a video or a live stream on the channel from monday to thursday we're back on friday so hopefully there'll be a video out then and um, but there won't be a video from monday to thursday so if you're sitting there next week and you're thinking oh my god cameras disappeared from the face of the earth it's not i've gone away i'm having a few days away um with my girlfriend with jess uh she deserves it massively she's been working very very hard recently um and obviously it's been quite busy for us as well on the channel so we thought we'd get away for a few days and just have a, a week away or four or five days away from from everything so there won't be any videos on the channel next week certainly not everything videos we've got a couple of minnesota united videos that will be going up during that period and um, but if you're wondering where the streams are and where the everton videos are they'll be back on friday and then obviously the week after next will be will be in full flow again but big big thanks for watching if you've enjoyed this one please hit that thumbs up button it does only take a second if you're new to the channel then don't forget to subscribe. It, it literally takes a second and we're flying towards 5,000 subs now. So if you could hit that sub button, it would mean a great, great deal to me. Massive thank you for watching. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below and we'll see you soon on the Mighty Blues.